Welcome to ITU Telecom World 2019 here in Budapest, Hungary. We are very pleased to be joined in the studio by Jennifer Manners, who's Senior Vice President for Regulatory Affairs for EchoStar. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. Now, I wanted to start off by talking about innovating together, connectivity that matters is this event's theme. Uh, what is connectivity that matters and why is it meaningful in your opinion? Oh, that's such a, a big question. So, um, but let me drill down a little bit. I, I think one of the exciting things about what's happening with 5G is the ability to bring such advanced and such exciting communications globally. But one of the important pieces is to reach everyone everywhere. You're going to need multiple technologies. So what 5G will ultimately evolve into is a network of networks, which will invite, uh, involve um, terrestrial technologies like, of course, terrestrial mobile broadband, fixed wireless services, um, but you'll also see things um, like HAPS, high altitude platforms, and of course satellite, which is where I'm most interested. And really what you're starting to see is you've got um, an exciting world of space right now with many high speed geostationary orbit satellites already up and more coming on board, but you've also got this exciting world of non-geos. And these non-geo stationary satellites are gonna complement what's being done by the geos and bring lower latency. So you're gonna have a world of high capacity, high speed, ultra reliable, some high latency and some low latency um, means of de delivery, which really matters because 5G is gonna have a, a range of communications. For instance, much of the IoT world is gonna be um, latency sensitive, but isn't gonna require a lot of bandwidth. And so you may come up with some sort of combination. And when you get service out to rural users, it's highly unlikely from a cost perspective and also in some cases a terrain perspective that you're gonna have mobile services deployed on the terrestrial. So you're going to have to look to these non-terrestrial technologies like satellite. And the good news is the technology is there to meet the needs. And, and also getting more and more accessible in terms of uh, cost. Yes, I think that's one of the exciting things that's going on is the satellite industry and the HAPS industry are involved in 3GPP right now. And we're working towards standards for a 2021 release. So we'll be part of the 3GPP 5G infrastructure, which of course means lower cost to consumers. And we've got a, I mean, we're here at ITU Telecom World. We've also got a, a conference coming up, the World Radio Communication Conference. I'm sure you will be heavily involved there. But I wanted to ask you a little bit um, uh, on the side. You, you also co-chair of the Network of Women. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit about that. And uh, have you got any activities planned around our, our next conference? So this has been a, a great opportunity for the past four years. I've been the co-chair of the Network of Women for the ITUR sector. I'm really focused on just a, a couple, a handful of study groups, but we're expanding it for the World Radio Conference and we're hoping to have, or we're planning to have an event. And we're still working through the details, but it's really to bring together all the women. And, and one of our big goals with the network of women is to try and develop young leaders. Um, we really think leadership is an important role. Um, and we find that actually having some mentoring programs where we're able to work with other women to, to help them maneuver through the ITU process because it can be so complex. Do you think women get uh, put off by uh, technology or do you think there are, there's much more of an uptake and much more of uh, an enthusiasm for, for, for technology nowadays? You know, I don't think women have ever been put off by technology. I think it's been more the doors have been harder to get open. And, and that's actually our focus is um, we have some really, really, and we have had for years, really, really smart, capable women who could serve as leaders. And it's really been, how do you get through the process at the ITU to achieve those leadership positions? And we have seen Vina Rawat, for instance, was a past chair of the World Radio Conference, and we'd love to see another woman chair. We've had women who chaired, Audrey Allison chaired one of the committees last WRC. Um, I'm hopeful that we'll have an, at least one woman this year. Um, so I think part of it is to really create that framework and, and enable women to take those leadership roles. And uh, finally, you're here at uh, the ITU Telecom World 2019. I wanted to ask you, what's the value for you of attending events such as this? So this is my first time here, and I've had a spectacular time. Um, what's been really um, helpful is the panels have been fascinating, really interesting, well put together. Um, the panel is having so many senior level government folks 
who are sharing their thoughts is invaluable as well as thought leaders. And then having the ability to meet with individual countries, I was very excited to see when I walked around the exhibit floor how many countries are here. Um, so you can actually go and spend some time and talk with folks. Um, and then the government of Hungary has been a terrific host and had a terrific reception last night and really gave us a chance to network. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much for joining us in the studio, taking the time to be here. And we look forward to catching up with you again, uh, WRC, perhaps. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.